Many times people get cut up into, well, I can't go to the gym today, so I'm not gonna train, or I can't go to the boxing gym or to the karate school, so I'm not gonna be able to train. Well, actually, everything you need is right outside, it's right over here in nature, and you gotta be able to take advantage of that. So I'm going to show you today a couple of things that I used to do within my training uh, that really, really helped me very, very much. They were actually part of, essentially part of my training. Even after I became a world champion, I used this methodology all throughout my career. Everyone knows that running is a very important part of being a fighter, and, and, and I had to run quite a bit. And uh, but what they don't understand is how to run to actually maximize your, your effort. You know, it's not enough just to go for a jog. That doesn't really cut it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a couple of things that I used to do with my running that are very good. All right, guys, see you guys in a bit. I'm gonna warm up. Hope you guys are all warmed up. Now, I used to run probably about half an hour or so. But the magic part about running was not so much how long or how far I ran, it was the sprints that I used to do that really helped me out. Uh, I probably ran about half an hour to 40 minutes at the absolute most. Uh, not that much, but the sprints were magical. Okay. Now the sprint had to be about 20 seconds long at least. You can begin in flat places. Later on you can get a little more ambitious and you can do heels and that kind of thing. I used to do about 12, uh, 12 sprints and they range between 30 seconds and a minute and 15, depending on, you know, on where I was. Because I used to fight to a round, so it'd be one per round, you know, most of the times. So I'm gonna do a few, so you guys can do yours. Pick a, a, a space that's flat first, or you can do heels right away, however you prefer. You can begin with two, okay, three. Sometimes you can do it while you're running, stop somewhere, do a few sprints, and then continue running. Or finish 15, 20 minutes, and then, get on with your sprints. Either way, it's gonna be awesome. All right, guys, I'm gonna go do my sprints. That was number one. That was number two. If you don't finish like this, you have to work harder. Good job, guys. Breathing is very important part of this process. You have to be able to control your breathing as you exercise as you punch, as you kick. That's many times when people go into competitions, you see amateur fighters gassing out after the second round because they hold their breath inside sometimes. <laughs> you know, and the heart begins to go too fast so you get tired very quickly. So breathing is very important. I always would control, you take all the air to your nose. You close your lips every time you inhale. You hold it inside for a second and you exhale. I was controlling. That way, you get your heart rate under control. One of the reasons why, you know, it's so important to inhale through your nose when you take gulps of air with your mouth. It's like a quick band-aid, you know? But unfortunately, it is, it's dangerous because you begin to have pains in the sides and cramps and things. So the air is going with, shouldn't be going. And uh, we're not meant to be breathing like that. So to be able to maximize your, your endurance and maximize your exercises and your training, you have to breathe properly. Imagine you, you're doing a thousand punches, just a thousand punches, and on number 800, you get, you get tired and you're gasping for air to your mouth. But after 100, you barely, you barely do and you barely train. If you are breathing properly, you can last all through 1,000 punches, still, and still, working on that timing, the speed, endurance, or whatever you're trying to work on. So you last so much longer, you maximize your effort. And it's never about being tired. It's about the work that you're putting in. 
That's what makes a difference. Sometimes people confuse being exhausted with being productive in your training. They're two different things. If being exhausted not necessarily means being productive. You have to be productive with your time. You have to be productive with your reps. If you're out of breath because you're not breathing right, you're actually working less. So, get on with that breathing, guys. It's gonna go a long way. Everywhere I walk, I always find things to train with. Everything around me is always a training tool of some sort. Chairs, sofas, trees, rocks, heels, people, anything you can name. So it's always important to, to figure out what can I use this for? I just found this tree right here. So I'm gonna do some pull-ups. It's pretty good. There's different kinds of pull-ups that you can do. I'm gonna do a simple one with the arms on the inside. Make sure you have a, a good grip, okay? And just pull yourself up. You can do sets of five, sets of 10, 20, 30, as many as you're comfortable, okay? All right, let's do a few. Let's go. Good job, guys. Jumping is awesome. It really help you with your endurance and conditioning, with your cardiovascular work. You can begin slow or small or big jumps. I used to, when I was a fighter, I used to do rounds of one minute uh, jumps. But you can begin with 20 seconds. You can begin with 10 jumps and then move it up to 15, to 16, and keep growing. You can time it to 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, you know? It's all up to you. The more you train, the better you get. Let's go. Good job, guys. Woo! I really found a way to work your arms and your chest, you know, and, and shoulders. It's actually doing push-ups, and there is many different kinds of push-ups. I'm gonna show you a fun one today. So I'm gonna put the feet right over here in the air. Make sure your back is always straight, though. Don't let the back arch, okay? Your back has to be straight. The pressure has to be on the arms and shoulders and chest, not your back. So I'm gonna put my, my toes right up here. Make sure you guys have a nice grip, whatever you want. And let's go. Good job, guys. You can do it set of 20, sets of 50, sets of 10, whatever you're comfortable. Make sure you know that you're working your best. All right, guys. I hope you guys enjoy this video and give you a few tips into how to train outdoors. I have my whole career training outside, so stay tuned. I'm going to have more videos to give you more little nuggets and little secrets or things that I use in my journey, in my career as a, as a world champion fighter. So subscribe to my channel, guys. Stay tuned for more videos. Love you guys.